Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and this is the challenge that will be part of the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group for August 2022. So I made this multi-pocket thing during one of my live streams, and it was suggested that I do a individual tutorial so you have an idea of how to put it together. So let me show you what we're going to do. To start with, I've got an oversized postcard that I've already cut down. This measures approximately five and a quarter inches wide by three and a quarter inches tall. Next, I have a piece of scrapbook paper that's three and a quarter inches tall by a little over three inches wide. And what I want to do right off the bat is glue this down so that the glue can be drying because later I go plan on going to the sewing machine. Now, if you don't plan to sew, then just make sure you put a generous amount of glue so that this paste will stay in place. So I'm just going to position that. I was using the uh, Fabri-Tac glue because I'm gluing onto a piece of glossy cardstock and sometimes things won't stick to that. So we got that piece. Next, I have a piece of book page that I've already kind of scored, but basically the measurement of this is 3.75 wide by 2.5 tall and then I did basically a half an inch on three sides and my plan is to take this piece across here and glue it down so that the top portion of this pocket is stronger then I will cut off at an angle these corners so that they don't bind up so they don't bind up when we fold them in and the next thing I need to do is colorize this. I want to change the color of it so that when I place it on here it looks really good together. So I've got a little box here that I like to spray in and while I'm at it I'm going to be making a journal card later and that way the Tattered Angels can be drying. So I've got some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. This is a color from the Garden Tea Party kit. I'm trying to use up some of my colors that I have here. So a pink a pale pink, a vintage pink would be a really good one. So I'm just going to spritz this a few times. And then I'll use my heat tool to dry it so that it doesn't um, tear when I start working with it later. So this piece is relatively dry. I've got another scrap of paper here that measures approximately three and three quarters almost. A three and a three and a half I guess and then it is almost four and a quarter inches tall and my thought for this is it's going to be another pocket I've already glued an additional piece of paper on the back so that it's a little bit stronger for punching a little thumb hole so I'm just gluing down that top leader edge and I'll go ahead and trim the corners this is a great way if you want to create a pocket that would accommodate a card that's exactly the width because it won't interfere with here. It'll just slide right down inside. So the next thing I want to do is add some color to this. So I've got some Distress Oxide bundled sage and I've got a little blending tool. So I'm just going to pick up some color and blend it on here. And while I'm thinking about it, I've got this piece here, and I need to put a little piece of book page across the top here. So I'm just going to grab a little scrap. That'll be good enough. And I'll need some Fabri-Tac glue. And I'll glue that right across the top here. And I'll cut off the excess. And then I'm going to add some green to this portion, as well as some Distress Ink. Okay, I've got here, this is a new stamp in my shop. This is called Leaves and Berries. So I want to stamp that. Make sure this is my top. So i got to have it going the right direction. I just like that it gives a little bit of a botanical feel to it. Set this aside for a moment. Okay, so I've got this little piece here. 
that's going to go on top of here, but I have another scrap of paper that's approximately an inch in depth and about three and a quarter inches wide. I've already gone around the edges with some distress ink. So now what I'll do is glue this down on top of this piece, kind of in the center. And I'm using this as a guide. So I know that this piece is going to go over. I want it to overlap just a little bit here. And then I've already stamped the word journal from the journal quartet number two. I can't get a hold of it. And that's going to go right here in the center of our little pocket. So I'll just grab some glue. And now what I want to do is go over to the sewing machine and I want to stitch across here and down this side. Then, oh, I need to punch a hole here. I need to stitch down the side across the bottom and back up. And I want to make sure that I get the center. So I'm just kind of folding it and marking it where the center is. Try not to make the fold go too deep. And then I've got a one and three eighths inch punch by stamping up. It's just a circle punch. So I'm going to come in here, kind of line that up as best I can and punch a little thumb hole, add some distress inks to that. And let's go to the sewing machine and stitch on these pieces. I have a regular sewing machine with regular thread, regular needle, pretty much whatever you would normally use for sewing standard fabric is what I use for sewing on paper. I do recommend that you use new thread and that your glue, if you've glued something together, is dry. So since this one is still a little damp, I'm gonna set it aside and work on my little pocket piece. And I've got it set up for a zigzag stitch. Again, you don't have to stitch. I like the look of stitches and I have a sewing machine. I know how to sew, so I use it. If you don't have a sewing machine, you could use a fake stitch by drawing it or use the Shabby Stitches stamp set that I offer. All right, so I'm gonna stitch down the sides. And when I get to the end, I put my needle over to the right-hand side and then I will rotate and then continue going. So that piece has been sewn and I'll grab the next piece. Since this one is still a little damp, I'm going to grab the pocket foundation and go across the top and down the side. And then I want to sew all the way around the word journal. All right, so now all the pieces are sewn. All right, so I got the sewing done. I sewed across the top of the pink portion of our pocket. I sewed around the outside edge of our secondary side pocket. And then I sewed around the word journal on top of our last pocket. So let's start assembling this. What I want to do is glue this down on top. So I will apply glue here and here. Don't need this little piece. Since I'm going paper to paper, I'm just using a lean tacky glue. But this little area over here is going to be on that slick paper. So I'm going to use a little bit of the Fabri-Tac. All right, so we're going to fold these little flaps in and line them up with the corner. Press them into place. And then this piece is going to glow, go right on top. And since it's again onto that slick paper, I'm going to go ahead and apply glue to the tabs with the Fabri-Tac. See where I place that piece of paper behind? All right, so there's the pocket portion pretty much made. The last thing that I'll do is I add strips to the backs of mine so that when I go to put them in my journals, I have a full use of the pocket. But I also wanted to make a journal card to go with this. So we already painted a piece of paper and I happen to have this Canvas Corp Brands paper it was a scrap that was printed incorrectly. So I cut off what I needed, which made this a four by six journal card. And then I made a five and three quarters by four, no, three and three quarters wide piece that I sprayed. And now I want to stamp it. I'll use the same stamp, the leaves and berries and stamp on top of the book page. So it just adds a little pattern to our piece of paper. So now what I want to do is glue this down. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue on the inside. 
I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and stitch around this outside edge real fast. So again, regular sewing machine, regular thread. I'm just going to stitch around this outside edge. So the card has been stitched around. I've already gone around the edges with some distress ink. I went ahead and stamped and colored and fussy cut out the cone flowers stamp. I used watercolor pencils to color it in and I thought it would be kind of pretty to put it on top of the book page. So I'll just add a little bit of a lean tacky glue to the back side. And I also stamped the word beauty is so deep. This words is word phrase. And then I've got a little piece of fabric here. I want to, I think I want this end. Yeah. I want to fray some of that fabric a little bit. I had the wrong end. Okay. This one is the cut in. So I'm just going to grab a few of these fibers. And kind of fray that edge because I ripped this. And now I'm going to use this as my guide and a piece or pair of fabric scissors and cut this a little bit wider than necessary and I will fray this end by grabbing some fibers so it kind of gives it a little frayed effect so now I'm going to glue the words on top of the fabric and then this piece is going to go right here at the bottom so then when we're using the pocket, we could put this journal card behind. And then I have a oversized mason jar. This is part of Calico Collage's Bridal Farms collection or horse collection. She has a bunch of horses with wildflowers. And then I made a bookmark because this was a six by six piece of paper. So I cut it four inches and I end up with a two inch strip that again, the pattern was messed up on the edge. So I glued another piece of paper that I spray with tattered angels like I did this piece and it fits because it's a two inch wide piece and our pocket is technically two and a quarter inches wide right inside there. And then I have one of Norella's little images. I look like little faux Polaroids that will go in here. So that's one pocket idea. Let me show you a couple others. Same concept, just different sides and kinds of paper. So this time the pocket is deeper from up and down, the same width, but the same concept. I made a side pocket that can hold a smaller journal card here. And then I have a tall skinny pocket here at the top. And then I made a different of the cone flower journal cards in the background there. And then here is another one. This one's smaller. So on this one, I used some scrapbook paper and a book page and kind of wrapped it around to the backside. And I stitched down with a very narrow stitching and made a little small tag to go across here. And then there's a smaller pocket. So, you know, kind of play around with your supplies and see if you can make a base that would have two different sizes of pockets mounted on the base and then the base itself becomes another pocket behind. I hope you enjoyed seeing just a quick tutorial on how to put this together. If you do, give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Of course, leave a comment below what you thought about this project and then make one of your own. Take a photo and go over to the Friendly Giant Journal People Facebook group to our event and post your photo of what you made to be entered into a drawing. I give away a prize at the end of the month and so all you have to do is just make something that epitomizes what I showed today or embellished what I did today on your own terms, on your own ideas. I'd love to see what you create. All right, everybody, know that I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time, or I have a recorded video if I'm not able to go live. And I, of course, I have other tutorials out there for you to watch. Thank you so very much for watching. I greatly appreciate your support. Y'all have a great day. Bye.